If you had to pick one thing that was more essential to life than anything else, it would probably be water because it has so many unique properties. In these experiments, we're going to compare those properties to two other substances, oil and alcohol, to see if maybe water could be replaced. We're going to run a bunch of little experiments to see how oil and alcohol compare to the characteristics of water. For the oil, I found some coconut oil. So 100% pure coconut oil, no water at all. The second one is going to be alcohol. And this is actually Everclear. Couldn't even get it in Minnesota. Had to go to Wisconsin to get it. And you can see 190 proof. That means it's 95% alcohol. So there's a little bit of water in there, but not much. And these are the two that we are going to put up against water to see if we could maybe drink these all the time instead of water. Let's test the heat capacity of each of the different liquids with a little help from our T-Rexes here. Now we can just stick the thermometers in there to measure the body temperature. So we've got water and we've got alcohol and then we've got the oil. Looks like they're all up to about 50 degrees Celsius, having a nice warm vacation in Mexico, and then boom, the meteor hits and it's all of a sudden cold. Now we're gonna see how well those different liquids stabilize the body temperature. So we're gonna measure how long it takes for the temperature to go from 50 degrees Celsius down to five degrees Celsius. This experiment showed really well that water has a higher heat capacity than either alcohol or oil are challengers. They took around 15 minutes to drop from 50 degrees Celsius to five. Water took almost twice as long, almost 30 minutes. That's really good for living organisms because when our main body fluid is water, our internal temperature doesn't fluctuate as much as it would if alcohol or oil were our main body fluid. Next, let's test the cohesive ability of each of these different liquids. That means their ability to stick to themselves. So I put a little food color in each one, but I'm going to drop each of them on this piece of wax paper and we can see how well they stick to themselves. So first I'll do the alcohol here, put a drop on there, and yeah, kind of sticks to itself, but pretty much spreads out on there. I'll do the oil on the other side, about the same as the alcohol actually, maybe a little bit more cohesive, kind of sticking to itself a little bit more to make a bubble. And then we'll finally test the water, the blue stuff here. And look how much better that sticks to itself. You can see like a bubble rising up, that means the water molecules are sticking to themselves instead of spreading out over the wax paper. So the water is definitely more cohesive than the other liquids. Now let's take a look at the adhesive abilities of these different liquids. That means how well they stick to other things. We're gonna test it using these little capillary tubes. So what I've got here is each different liquid on this wax paper, and I've got three capillary tubes in the sponge if these liquids are adhesive, they should climb right up the walls of the capillary tubes. And yep, actually, all of them do a little bit, but it looks like the water goes almost twice as far as the alcohol or the oil. So water is much more adhesive than both of our challengers. Let's take a look at a characteristic called the heat of evaporation or vaporization. That's the amount of energy required to turn a liquid into a gas. We're gonna test that characteristic on our alcohol, our water, and on our oil by using our little sponge bodies here, okay? So they're gonna soak up each of the different liquids. We're gonna weigh them, put them in some heat, and measure how much of each liquid evaporates to compare it to water. We're gonna put them in this hot environment in here and see how much evaporates after 45 minutes. Here we go, we've got some fresh baked sponge cookies Let's see how much of each one evaporated. So first we've got the alcohol, the initial weight of the alcohol in there 
after taking away the weight of the sponge and the watch glass was 32.5 grams and the scale now reads zero. So we lost 100% of our alcohol in that 200 degrees for 45 minutes. Let's check out the oil and I can tell that there's plenty of that still there. 29.9 grams left. So barely any of the oil evaporated. Now let's compare that to the water and we are at 31.4 grams. Water is kind of right in between both. Some of it evaporated, which would help cool the organism, but most of it was retained so that the organism stayed hydrated. What we're gonna look at here is how the different states of each of these substances behave in relation to each other. So what I'm gonna do here is try to make little ice cubes out of each of these different liquids in these little forms here. Well, our little samples have been in the freezer for quite a while. As we expected, we now have ice instead of liquid water, but the oil solidified as well. See, now it's this white solid instead of that more clear liquid. The alcohol, still completely liquid. Now what we're gonna do is take each of these and put them back in their state that they are at room temperature, which is liquid, and see if they sink, if they float, or if they are equal density. First, we'll try the alcohol, and I'm just gonna pipette some of the colder liquid into the warmer liquid. And if we look at it, yep, the colder stuff sinks. So when the alcohol gets cooled down, it becomes more dense than the liquid. Now we'll try the oil, and I'm just gonna squeeze this little solid chunk into my test tube of liquid oil. And if we watch it, we can see that it is slowly sinking once the air bubbles get off it. So the solid form is more dense than the liquid form for oil. Finally, we'll try the water. So I'll squeeze our little ice cube in here. So this is completely opposite to the oil. The solid form of water is less dense than the liquid form. And I guess that's why ice cubes float in our drinks instead of sink. 